I would like to remind uh, every one of ourselves to take a moment and cultivate uh, the highest uh, form of motivation. Uh, we call it uh, bodhicitta motivation or the altruistic uh, motivation uh, seeking complete enlightenment uh, for the benefit of all other sentient beings. And with that kind of at least uh, contrived uh, bodhicitta, altruistic uh, motivation, uh, we should all participate uh, in this uh, bodhisattva discourse 
on the perfection of uh, samadhi or concentration. Yeah. Uh, the bigger context uh, that we have been dealing with uh, is, uh, you know, the development of uh, shamatha or uh, calm abiding, mental tranquility, mental questions. Uh, we call it shine. And uh, so that requires a number of uh, favorable uh, conditions uh, that would include uh, uh, being in a solitude the benefits of uh, being in a solitude. We talked about that uh, quite a bit before. And also uh, the need to uh, recognize and uh, kind of deal with uh, our attachment uh, to uh, external uh, phenomena or things and internal phenomena, meaning dear and near ones or the sentient beings. <coughs> Do so Lodi Chosomasanata so <laughs> So <laughs> Take Jubal 
So as Kishala uh, read uh, from the extensive commentary and explained uh, uh, that there are, you know, uh, favorable conditions, both external and internal, uh, for developing uh, calm abiding or shamatha. Yeah. And uh, in the uh, ornament of Mahayana Sutra, Dodejen, Sutra Alamkara, uh, the external conditions are mentioned, I think five of them. Um, for example, uh, one needs to find a solitude that is a safe environment so that you don't get frequented by the wild beasts and animals, right? Uh, your life is in danger. So it should be a safe environment. Uh, it should be a good place in the sense uh, that uh, the place uh, really that does not uh, you know, cause any health issues for you. As a matter of fact, a place that really uh, you know, promotes uh, health uh, well-being. You know, that's important. And a place uh, that, uh, you know, uh, where you can find uh, the uh, livelihood uh, relatively quite simple. It's not too far away from the town in case you need to go for alms begging. But it's not too close to your practice so that, you know, you don't get disturbed, right? So they have to easy access to uh, sustenance, you know. And that might include, as we said before, uh, fruits you know, that grow. Um, and um, also good companions, right? Uh, if uh, there are, you know, practitioners who share the same uh, goal and the mindset, right, who can be supportive of each other's practice. Uh, so those Dharma companions are also important. Tosangwa, we call it good friends or companions. Uh, and uh, then, any other essentials that you need, Yuje Demba, right? Uh, the essential things, uh, you know, for you to be able to, uh, you know, do your practice. So those seems to be more of external uh, favorable conditions uh, uh, important for uh, the practice of developing uh, shamatha or uh, calm abiding. Uh, but there are also internal conditions, right, which uh, are equally important as well, if not more important. And uh, uh, for example, a uh, sense of contentment, right? Being contented with uh, simple livelihood and simple living, right? That's very important. Uh, and have less desires, not have this kind of unlimited desires for this and that, right? So the Tibetan uh, contentment is, uh, you know, cho sheba, and deba means less desires, not like have too many uh, desires and needs. Um, and also to observe uh, pure ethics. You know, observing pure ethics or shila is a foundation practice, right? Without which, uh, you know, one cannot develop uh, uh, calm uh, abiding. Uh, and also uh, not get too much involved in all this hustle and bustle of life. You know, don't get too much engaged in all kinds of activities. Chawa mangba means you're too busy. You're a busy body, you know. That doesn't work for developing come abiding. So, uh, so that's also, uh, you know, important. And uh, so, as we said, so those are external and internal conditions, but in general, or by anything that is, uh, how should say, supportive of your practice, that is uh, you know, essential for your practice, right? We can think about all of those things uh, required for uh, developing stability of the mind. So once you go into the solitude, fulfilling these conditions, our main uh, goal or the purpose is to be able to develop, uh, you know, concentration on a given uh, focus of the object. This is how we develop uh, a single pointedness or stability of the mind, or this is how we develop uh, a calm abiding. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Ma se corsa, 
Nasıl Rimba Rangine <coughs> 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 Ne <coughs> Çeviri'nin <gülüyor> Majikoniya Yedidu <coughs> As uh, Gisela read from the extensive commentary and explained, uh, those of you uh, who have this English translation by Stephen Batchelor's, we are on page 107, and the explanation pertains to stanza 35. Uh, that reads, befriending no one and begrudging no one, my body will dwell alone in solitude if I'm already counted as a dead man. When I die, there will be no mourners, unquote. Uh, so that is uh, the stanza really reflects uh, the benefits of being in a solitude. I mean, being in a solitude is uh, necessary for developing shamatha or calm abiding. And we talked about uh, you know, benefits of being in a solitude, and this is also part of that. And so what do we get out, so to speak, if we go into solitude? 
Well, in the solitude, you know, as a practitioner, uh, our, uh, the objects of attachment are not in our proximity, isn't it? So we are less likely to get attached to them because when they are in the proximity, then the attachment uh, uh, you know, uh, arises, isn't it? Uh, so um, as we say, befriending no one. So there are no dear and near ones right, to whom we get attached to usually because they are not in the proximity environment, solitude. Uh, there are no enemies or people who don't like us because when we, uh, you know, objects of the anger are in the proximity, then we are likely to get agitated and angry, right? They are not there either. So this is benefit of being in a solitude uh, that we don't have the objects of attachment or the hatred, okay? Uh, and because we decided to go into solitude, our family and friends kind of know that we have distanced ourselves right from them and we have gone there. And depending on how long we have been there, they might count us as already a dead person, isn't it? Or maybe they think like, well, whatever you are, you know, <laughs> you left. Uh, and uh, so, and uh, in case we die in a solitude, there's nobody who's going to be crying over our dead body or like mourning us because you know, they are not there. They're already counted as a dead person, so so be it, you know. And we also don't get attached to them because they are not in the environment, okay. Uh, and so these are the uh, benefits being in a solitude and dedicated to our practice of uh, cultivating mental s stability or the uh, calm abiding. And the birds and animals really don't, uh, I mean, I said we don't get attached to them or they don't uh, get attached to us, right? So being in the solitude, uh, uh, so they are not, uh, you know, how should I say, are objects of uh, you know, anger or attachment, really. Yes. <laughs> ye <laughs> Sharda <laughs> Shedda Stanza and as there will be no one around to disturb me with their mourning, thus there will be no one to distract me from my recollection of the Buddha. Uh, so as Krishna explained, uh, that being in a solitude, uh, uh, the benefits that we enjoy are uh, that our you know, objects of attachment, dear and near ones, are not in the environment or proximity. And so uh, we are less likely to get attached to them. 
uh, and uh, neither are the objects of uh, anger and hostility, enemies and people who don't like it, they are not there either. So relatively speaking, our mind is more at ease and peace, isn't it? Because the conditions that usually trigger our mind, attachment and hatred, are not there. Uh, the conditions are not in the solitude environment. Okay? So these are the benefits uh, uh, that we enjoy. And uh, uh, should we die in the solitude at death, right, we can still stay focused in our practice. Because there's nobody uh, like crying and lamenting and, you know, just going berserk around us. You know, that, no, you die, no, you can leave me, like nothing. Gisela didn't say that, I just added that. So there's nobody, right, who is uh, mourning and crying and all of those things. So therefore, in a peaceful state, now whatever your practice is, like you want to think about Buddha, you can recollect the Buddha. You want to think about Dharma, you can do that. Your practice is bodhicitta, altruism. Uh, your practice is whatever it is that you want to go for refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, you can do that more easily because you are not disturbed by people crying around you and those objects of attachment and hatred are not there triggering all of these other like delusions in you. Okay, so these are the like true benefits of being uh, in a solitude. So the bottom line is this, being in a solitude, right? we really want to do a good practice, don't we? Right? We want our practice to be effective. So we are in a condition, environment, where that's more possible and likely to happen. Right, and uh, you know, uh, as we said, uh, the objects of uh, conditions of attachment and hatred are not there, and the birds and animals are not going to cry because you are dying, so they are not going to be uh, disturbing us, you know, and so now our mind is more at peace, and we are able to recollect, right, and focus on our own practice, okay, and so that th those are really real benefits of uh, being in a solitude. What <laughs> Jump Great Kadamba uh, master of the Geshe's, uh, especially in the context of Lumbrim, uh, you know, remind us uh, that uh, at the time of the death, uh, relatively speaking, uh, the practice uh, that we could done uh, quite easily is uh, to recollect Buddha, Dharma, Sangha and go for refuge in them. Okay. Um, and um, um, so even if we are thinking about Buddha, Dharma, Sangha and trying to go for refuge, let's say our practice is not complete. Before we finish our refuge practice, we die. Because we recollected Buddha Dhamma Sangha, that recollection itself is so powerful that we will not be reborn in a bad migration. We die. And metaphorically speaking, even like a hundred people are pushing you from the behind, right? Throw you into the hell. Hundred people are in the front dragging you down. Doesn't matter how many hundred people, thousands are trying to do that, but if we go for refuge 
in enlightened being Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, even if the practice is not completed by the power of that recollection, we will not be reborn in the bad migration, which means we will have a good rebirth, isn't it? Uh, whereas, yes, you could do any other practice, but sometimes it's really hard at the time of the death to think about bodhicitta, isn't it? Or to think about any other practice, especially I didn't say, let's say emptiness. I know that's wonderful, but, you know. But refuge, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, can more easily be recalled into the mind. And so Kadamba masters say, that's what we should focus on at the time of death. Oh dear, Chilanjuvashe,叫做去吧,叫做去吧,so. <laughs> So the Gata Masters highly recommend uh, that at the time of the death, uh, you know, it's very hard, I mean, the assumption is that if it's hard to uh, recall any other practice, uh, just, you know, focus on refuge. And uh, if you could complete the refuge practice, that's great. Even if you don't complete it, if you die in the process, you will have a good rebirth still. Uh, and so usually the practice of a refuge, uh, you know, if you want to complete it, it would include a number of things, uh, such as uh, uh, we, uh, you know, through the practice of refuge, number one is we would like to purify our negativities, isn't it? Dipa Changwa. Okay? And then the second one is that uh, we, uh, you know, visualize a thing that we are receiving the uh, blessing and inspiration from the three jewels, right? the Chilab Juba. The third one is that we feel that we come under their care, kindness, right? We, right, we uh, you know, come under. So uh, complete that refuge practice, even if we couldn't complete all of these things, but if we are able to uh, recall Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, you know, that is service powerful for us to have uh, a good rebirth uh, in the next life, that we don't, uh, you know, worry about falling into the bad migrations, even if uh, hundreds of people wants to wish that for us or push us into that. That's not going to happen. Nashi Shoo Gumzi Java Song So Teta Lamjani Kumba Shivata Sangju Deva So La Shivate Yang Majim. Then the one draw this door long lay Sangju Liber Shivata Lam the Liber Kumba Yi Shivate Yang Bali Chimni Tavashi Shesus what did I say? Sanjay Jabjo, Pio, Namjak, Yunda Sanjay, 
So a number of uh, um, uh, sutras have been cited in the commentary to substantiate the point or the benefits of uh, going for refuge in our daily practice and especially at the time of the death. And the sutras such as Dao Trimento, Chandra Prabha Sutra, and sutras such as Kunja Trimento, Ratna Prabha Sutra, and uh, treatises such as uh, Shiksha Samuksha, combined in of Bodhisattva trainings, this has been cited uh, to substantiate uh, uh, the contention that uh, refuge practice is a very beneficial practice. And as Gisela said, but for us to be able to do that, of course, in our everyday life, you know, if uh, we uh, do our refuge practice, then we get acquainted with that, isn't it? Then it is more likely that we can easily uh, do that practice at time of the death. Uh, but when we are alive, we don't do that, but we hope that we can do that at the time of the death, that may be a little difficult, right? Uh, uh, and so it's important that we practice now <laughs> uh, the refuge so that we are able to do it better. So at death, you know, as we said, if we can do the whole refuge practice with you know, receiving the blessing, coming under the care of the three jewels, uh, and purifying our negativities, wow, well, what can we say? That's great. Even if we don't finish all of those things, by the power of recollecting the three jewels that we will have uh, in a good rebirth. So dying in a positive state of mind is uh, you know, very uh, crucial for next good rebirth, isn't it? Uh, and uh, so if we are thinking about Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, we will die in a positive state of mind, right? We are not going to die in a uh, you know, disturbed uh, uh, you know, uh, state of mind. What is your dark horse? Shadow what <laughs> 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 Uh, that if in our everyday uh, daily practice we go for refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha, you know, it's more likely at the time of death uh, that, you know, we might die of sickness, but we may not die of uh, very uh, excruciatingly painful sickness, right? If that happens, really it's hard to practice anything at the time of the death. Nobody could probably manage it. But we might die of sickness, but it's something we can still handle. We can still uh, think of Buddha Dhamma Sangha. So such are the benefits of practice. <coughs> And also, Keshara said uh, that for us beginners, Le Thang Boba, it's really important uh, you know, to find our solitude and build our practice firmly, isn't it? Uh, because if we live among hustle and bustle, all kinds of things, uh, however strong wish we have to do our practice, just because of uh, the environment, it's very difficult uh, to build our practice stability. So that's why it's important for us to isolate ourselves from the hustle and bustle kind of life, go into solitude, build our practice. Once we develop a certain amount of confidence, right? Okay, now I think I'm doing good. Then as Keshara said before, now we might have to bring ourselves into 
the real difficult situation and hustle and bustle conditions and test ourselves, right? Have I developed any stability or not? Are you with me? So that's why as a beginner practitioners, you know, our really practice in the beginning seems to be more of a preventative and defensive technique, isn't it? Isolate, stay away, right? Don't stay close to the, all the annoying conditions, the kind of thing, you should didn't say that, but you know, <laughs> unfavorable conditions. But once we build our practice strong, then it's like a, you know, offensive confrontation. Okay, let me bring into the town and you know, put myself there with everybody and see how I'm going to do this. So right? now we are more like in a confrontation stage, like okay, can I handle it? Am I able to do it better? Right? This is how we call it applying dharma conditions to the practice, right? Because if you only stay in the solitude, we feel like we're great. Then you come back to the real situation like, oops. I'm not. So then we have to go back and continue our practice. But coming back, we see that we have made progress. We are doing good, right? Pat on our back, which I didn't set my footnote. And then, you know, we can continue our practice. Lusum the Dewa Jebe, say young Gavi, Nasel Shesum, Dung Say Shing, and young Gavi, Nasin, Sing Shung Niva Am Niva Am, Til Soa Ni Lashing, Nizuso Jung Nizuso Jomu Gobe, say Sing Shung at Hans. The Shabdas or Niju Niva. Shadow <laughs> Miguel Joa Tong Yamba Dani Jibu Shami Himidu never said a Cursa Dani Jibu Tong Yamba never talk, show me never Dani Jibu Dani Jibu Shami Himidu never said a Tata Chosu <laughs> Two <laughs> So, Gishala's explanation, which he started to give, uh, pertains to uh, two stanzas. Uh, uh, 37 and 38, 37 at the bottom of page 107 and 38 on the top of 108. Uh, the stanzas read, 
Uh, therefore, I shall dwell alone, happy and contented with few difficulties in very joyful and beautiful forests, pacifying all distractions. Having given up all other thoughts, it says intentions here, being motivated by only one thought, I shall strive to settle my mind in equipoise by means of uh, shamatha, calm abiding, and to subdue it uh, with vipassana or superior insight. Right? So those are the uh, relevant stanzas here. So as Gisela started to explain, that uh, when we physically isolate ourselves from the hustle and bustle kind of life and put in a solitude, just being in a solitude, relatively speaking, our mind at, is at ease, isn't it? Because we are not in the proximity of attach, objects of attachment and hatred, isn't it? And uh, we are able to focus on our practice more because of uh, being in a conducive uh, environment. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the practice can be, I mean, whatever your practice is. Of course, here we are dealing with the bodhisattva's way of life. And for bodhisattvas, uh, you know, cultivating, uh, you know, bodhicitta, uh, altruistic mind of enlightenment is the heart practice, isn't it? That's what it is. As a matter of fact, uh, they may be focused on cultivating the two types of bodhicitta, conventional bodhicitta or the conventional mind of enlightenment and ultimate bodhicitta or the ultimate mind of enlightenment. Yeah? Or that, you know, you could just be focusing on uh, emptiness. Maybe that's your uh, right uh, cup of tea or coffee there. Uh, or maybe you are just focus on any of the six perfections, right, parameters, right? So whatever your practice is, you are in a conducive environment that you are more able to focus and uh, do your practice well. So that, that suggests the, uh, you know, uh, benefit there. And we will continue. Jabadalsi Give Shona Tini Ambo Heroes in the Yonayan, not the church, the church here, which is what they are. 
so being in a solitude, uh, one gives up uh, all uh, intentions, that's how it's translated, all kinds of thoughts, uh, meaning uh, all kinds of uh, what we call nam uh, um, uh, which is very hard to def uh, translate in English properly, right? We can say uh, conceptual thoughts is better, more neutral. Sometimes I would like to say disturbing thoughts. Uh, or all afflictive thoughts, let's say. Okay? Because being in a solitude, yes, we have isolated ourselves physically from hustle and bustle. But more important is to isolate our mind from uh, crazy thoughts. Kishila didn't say crazy. You mean? Uh, maybe that's a good translation there. Okay? Because we want to isolate our mind from all these you know, conceptual thoughts, crazy monkey thoughts, and we want to stay focused on one thing. And maybe one thought that we should really have is the bodhicitta thought. And that's how bodhisattvas, as Krishna said before, their main practice is cultivating the two types of bodhicitta or altruistic mind, conventional bodhicitta and ultimate uh, you know, bodhicitta. And so they know that being in a solitude, uh, now they find themselves in a conducive environment in the sense that uh, there are less distractions for your sense perceptions, isn't it? Our sense doors are less disturbed by X, Y, Z, all the things, right? In a solitude, it's more like our sense doors are restrained because they are not perturbed by all kinds of condition factors. So now we can internally focus on, we can internally isolate our mind from all crazy thoughts, maybe reflective thoughts, and stay focused on cultivating bodhicitta. Yeah. Uh, and that's what actually the bodhisattvas do. And then should uh, you know, some people appear and they ask for dharma teaching, uh, then I mean, it suggests that uh, I just don't always turn them away like, oh, I'm meditating. I don't talk, no. Keep teaching. Because bodhisattvas really real intention is they would like to benefit sentient beings. And here is an opportunity to share dharma. Uh, should anybody end up in a solitude, say, we would like to hear some teaching, so don't reject them, right? As if like I'm a practitioner, right? Don't go away. No, just teach them. Uh, so it's important to share uh, the dharma. Imbeni <laughs> <coughs> so as much as we are talking about, uh, you know, the importance of being in a solitude, uh, being in a solitude doesn't simply mean that we physically distance and isolate ourselves from hustle and bustle kind of life and then go into some kind of peaceful environment. Uh, and then our mind or thing is really very crazy and thinking about all 10,000 things. You know, Geshe didn't say 10,000 things, you know. That doesn't mean we are in a solitude. Yeah, we have physically put ourselves in some peaceful environment, but, you know, how are we different from all the wild beasts living in that really solitude? I mean, they live there too, right? And, uh, you know, if there is no difference between them being in the forest or the solitude, we being there, and our mind is as afflictive and crazy as ever, 
then there is no point of being in a solid. Actually, we are not in a solitude in some sense. We can argue that, right? We are not in a solitude. Uh, and so we have to think, OK, why I came into solitude? What am I trying to do? And in what way my way of thinking and motivation are different from all these birds and wild animals in the forest too, right? If I'm not making any difference here, then I'm not fulfilling the purpose of being in a solitude. Although I might think, oh, people think you went to solitude, like you're still thinking, oh, what are people thinking about me? <laughs> so it is not fulfilling any goal there, right? So we have to really uh, check with our motivation and why we came into solitude. ま、<音><音><音><音><音><音> So the more important is once we are physically in a solitude, we really have to take time and look inwardly and say, why, what am I doing here? Why I came into solitude, right? And uh, am I able to make any uh, uh, you know, inner uh, perspective changes? Or am I able to transform my mind? change my mind, attitude, my perspective in some way, right? If we are not doing that, just simply being in a solitude physically does not fulfill, right, uh, the purpose of being in a solitude, right? Because as we said, there are other animals too. Birds are in the solitude, and the wild beasts are in the solitude. Monkeys are kind of jumping from one branch to the other in the solitude. And maybe the shepherd boys are grazing their animals, so they are in solitude too. But that's not what it is, right? I came to solitude just to make inner transformation and changes. Am I doing that or not, right? That's a very important uh, to uh, figure out. Otherwise, uh, you know, we are uh, defeating the purpose of, uh, you know, being in a, a, a solitude. <laughs> Chirgomaso, <laughs> That Pony Shadan 
Sesh Teshala read from the commentary and explained uh, that once we uh, physically isolate ourselves from Hassan and Basel kind of life and put ourselves in a solitude, peaceful environment, then it is really much more important for us to look within ourselves and find out uh, why we have come into solitude, right? It's not just enough to physically isolate ourselves from uh, you know, all kinds of activities and be in solitude. Our mind has to be isolated from all kinds of disturbing conceptions or afflictive thoughts, and mind has to be in a solitude as well. Actually, that's more important. So this is why, as a yogi practitioner, uh, we want to ask ourselves, what was my motivation? Right? Why I put myself in this solitude physically? Okay? Uh, and, uh, and then we can figure out that, well, because I was scared of uh, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, delusional experiences, isn't it? And uh, I reflected on the force of attachment hatred. So being in the close proximity of all these objects is really scary. You know? That scared me. So I came into solitude, isolated from them. Uh, you know, living a very crazy hustle and bustle kind of life, uh, you know, is with no respite. That is crazy. So I, I'm scared of that. So that's why I came into solitude, so that I'm able to, uh, how should I say, cultivate my mind, right, and bring some inner transformation. That's why I came here. Now, am I able to stay focused and fulfill my purpose here? being in a solitude. I'm scared of all delusions. I'm scared of all negativities. I'm scared of all these crazy things happening. And so that's why I came here physically. And now I have to make sure that mentally that I'm able to right, to cultivate my uh, mind in practice. Right? That's important. If you're not able to do that, then I mean, uh, as we said before a few times, that we are defeating the purpose of being in solitude. Right? Then we are not different from birds and animals and the monkeys and of this in the forest. They are in solitude too. Okay. Yeah. I want to say, because I want to say, 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 I want Governo <laughs> Any <laughs> Ingi 
So as Krishna continues to explain uh, that in the commentary is said that uh, you know we can learn a lot of things uh, from texts such as Shiksha Samuksha, combining with the Sattva trainings uh, to fulfill our purpose of being in a solitude. Uh, and uh, so being in a solitude means that our both body and mind must be in solitude, not just the body, and leave the mind behind. Okay? Uh, that's not what it is. So this is why once we are physically in a solitude, then it's very important for us to reflect uh, and find out why I came here and what am I doing here, what's the purpose of making such a big sacrifice, right? We do make a big sacrifice, go to the solitude. And maybe we put ourselves in danger being in a solitude, right? But we said, whatever happens to me, I'm going to go there, I'm going to stay focused on my practice, right? For bodhisattvas is uh, cultivating and enhancing the two minds of enlightenment uh, and uh, kind of uh, doing the six perfection parameters, right? And for us, any other practice there, come abiding. So am I doing that? Am I really focused on like my practice to cultivate uh, my you know, mind. And if we're doing that, then you know, uh, it makes sense why we are in the solitude. But if our mind is not in practice or doing anything, then uh, really just physically in the solitude uh, you know, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't cut it. You know? uh, and so we have to really, uh, in the success summit it says that being in a solitude, you can focus on cultivating loving kindness, chamesem, right? Uh, that you can really just kind of motivate yourself to stay focused on the practice that I'm here going to really do my practice well and that would delight the Buddhas, right? So Buddhas will be happy that I came here and I'm really focusing on my uh, practice. And so any other practice that you can focus on. No. Oh, this is because, uh, 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 no, she is the, Jujun no, uh, and then in a commentary, uh, extensive commentary on the guide we call Namshe, uh, it also mentions, I mean, more or less the same thing, uh, that once we are physically in a solitude, uh, we really want to uh, look within and figure out, uh, you know, why we came and what's going to be your main practice. Maybe you're there to cultivate samadhi, concentration. That's fine, right? And that's what you should be doing. Yeah. And as we said, bodhisattvas, you know, they are really focused on cultivating uh, conventional bodhicitta, and then, you know, they integrate that with uh, the ultimate bodhicitta, and then, you know, being motivated by these two altruistic minds, then they engage in the sixth perfection. That's what the bodhisattva is focused on, right? So the bottom line is this. Whatever is the practice, we come into solitude to transform our mind, isn't it? Change our mind. Am I doing that? Are we doing that or not? If you're doing it in your own way, whatever your practice is, right, then it makes sense. If you're not changing anything inside, we're just physically in a peaceful <laughs> environment, then how are we different from the birds and animals, isn't it? We really want to make a difference here, isn't it? Right? I want to differentiate myself from all these other sentient beings in the forest, you know, and how can I do that? So that means we really can cultivate our mind. This is the only way we make a difference otherwise. Otherwise, we are sharing the same environment. We are not different from them. Yes. 
so it seems like a qualm has been raised in the XM commentary. They said, well, bodhisattvas are known for complete dedication for the well-being of others, right? They can only think about others' well-being. And they do everything to do that. That's bodhisattva. That makes them bodhisattva. That's who they are, isn't it? But all the things I hear, learning here, is about how I should let go of my attachment, how I should let go of my hatred, how I should kind of tame my mind. Everything seems to focus on me, right? How is this really beneficial to others? Are you with me? That's the core. Right? They said, both of us think about others. But all the things you're talking about is you. You know, I should deal with my attachment. I should deal with my hatred. I should deal with my monkey mind. We didn't say the monkey mind, you know? So that is all about you, you, you. So how is this connected to right Buddhist way of life? Well, the thing is that until and unless we tame and subdue our own mind, there is no way to help subdue others' mind. This is why it is. Why I need to work with my mind and how I have to let go of my attachment, hatred, and all negativities. Until and unless I do that, succeed, there is no way for me to benefit others. So that's why the focus seems to be dealing with one's own crazy mind here. Okay. <laughs> Non, Dojagini, Kongi, <laughs> Tuba 
순순 다 착배 편수 동이 와도 라마 뜻이 미세드 라마야나 시와 이노시에 부도 송호 드다 니지 님이 남 예바라 시에 니어 시와 시에 워디 드다 니바 니어가 쪼시에 대 시와 다 니바 나라 쪼아 제니 디 쇼라 심 呃，地球的森那边儿，错，帮我收拾。我听到他开始讲的，那边你们这边听的，那个，老鹰这边讲的，现在旁边这边听的，那个，说说说，看见的谁，说这边这边，特别绿天，不把阳光的，这这这这这
खर्चा थम तेज खर्चा जेबे थम सुनता ना था उपा सुनता शक भी फिर जो लोग रब तेजे एने लम सीधे से दिए रामायण शिवा शेषे फुदो सोंग रामायण शे शिवा तो खाने मैंने खाने सीधे से रामायण दिन सुबह कमे मोबाइल से कल शिव जाओ ठीक देखा रब दी मा शिव खाने दो हजार दिन रहते दो हजार छे बोरे थे दो हजार छे बोरे वो दे ตะตะเดวะนะนะจ้วยเสียนี่ที่ชอเลยเส้นนัมเบอร์ 2 แม่ตองตองจะชื่อเนี่ยขลาดเดินเซ็กเดเบ้นี่ที่จ๋าเดเนี่ยซาวะซอชื่อซาวะโลนี่มันจะจุ่มมันจะเช่าจิรอโอเ
longer kidnapped her, right? So in order to get back his wife, well, that was a big war, <laughs> right? Waste for the sake of securing your wife. And how many got killed, right? Of course, looks like it says that Ram got killed, but that's not true. He never got killed, you know? Uh, so he was alive, but I mean, he killed many, and many lost lives for the sake of just securing his wife, Sita. So that's what attachment is, right? His attachment to uh, Sita. Uh, and so we can find many stories to uh, kind of understand and understand how attachment can be very nasty, sneaky, deceptive, you know, uh, and it could even cost our lives. So maybe that's a good point to stop there. So we welcome your questions. We'll stop there today. Uh, online, yes. Not online yet. You don't have? Oh, good. Okay. Um, wow, what a humbling lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Why is death excruciating? Hmm. And for those who die peacefully, have they earned that privilege or is it accidental? And another question, it, you know, we have here not reached the deathbed, but so many versions, interpretations of those on the deathbed seem to indicate their desperation for liberation from a life of wrongdoing through things like deathbed apologies, uh, excuse me, deathbed confessions, and that desire to make amends. Um, so is that a universal condition on the deathbed to be conscious of wrongdoing through life? So is that the one question, or you have another question somewhere you said earlier? Or oh, that's the two questions were, why is death excruciating? Okay. And those who die peacefully, have mm -hmm. they earned okay. that? Sure. And the second is, yes, are most people conscious on the deathbed sure. of mm -hmm. karma? Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, she <laughs> so what Geshe-la says is that, you know, where we may find difference on the dead bed, that some people seem to die more peacefully, uh, and some probably die more excruciatingly. Uh, but that's a kind of what we might call it privilege, where it's related to, you know, how during our lifetime, you know, we have uh, kind of handled ourselves, right? Have we prepared ourselves for that eventuality? 
if we have been practicing whatever practice we have been doing, then because of that appreciation and power that at the time of death, we may be able to face it a little more right, peacefully, right? And if we have never thought about that, and then we say, okay, when it hits, then I'll do it, then that time we'll freak out, and it's going to be excruciating, right? So, and of course, it's all delayed too, one's own karma as well. But sometimes external conditions could also be helpful, let's say, uh, on the deathbed, if the people who are helping us, uh, you know, if they can create a little more conducive environment, right? So they can say, can remind us, like, hey, now you should think about, you know, everybody has to die. This is it, you know? And think about Buddha or whatever, right? So think about something positive. Okay, and then that might help us, right? That kind of reminder could help us, you know? Uh, but ultimately, it's a lot to do with how we conduct our life in, when we are alive, right? How we prepare for that eventuality, yeah. So if you want to call it privilege, you have earned it through your own practice, isn't it? But if not, you know, uh, we pay for the karma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the other one, Gisela sort of thinks that, you know, where at the time of death, you know, sometimes we regret and we might ask for forgiveness, whatever. That could be universal, right? Not like everybody seems to be ready to ask for forgiveness or even regret for what they've done. But people who have gone through that, that seems to be more of a universal, right? Yeah. Uh, thank, thank you for teaching today. Um, <coughs> so my first question is, you said with the refuge practice, there was purify and then Purifying Some negativity and receiving the blessing from the three jewels and then feeling that you come under their care, right? Okay. You are protected. In other words, you come under their protection. Those three things. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was the first one. And then, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Then the second one, so it talks about isolation of the mind from crazy thoughts. Mm -hmm. or isolation of the mind, sorry. Mm -hmm. And... I was wondering, like, is the process of that kind of what we've been talking about, like contemplating the sufferings of samsara and death mm -hmm. and all that, mm -hmm. is that kind of the process that you would isolate your mind from the crazy thoughts? Because I'm assuming the crazy thoughts is kind of maybe, I don't know if like illusion is the right word, but mm -hmm. um, like a reference to the eight worldly concerns. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if that's what yeah. that meant by isolation. Uh, and <laughs> So what Geshele is saying is, yes, if we think about uh, the suffering nature of samsara or any other thought, if that's helping us to direct our mind more into the positive direction, state of mind, then we say, yes, that's part of isolating our mind from uh, you know, afflictive thoughts and like that, right? So it depends, right? Is our mind more kind of now going into the positive trajectory, so to speak, right? By doing that kind of thinking, yeah. Thank you. And then I just had one more question too. Um, so obviously in the, in the text it says for the sake of women, but can we mm -hmm. kind of extrapolate? Because you also used, um, I think, the phrase uh, life partners, mm -hmm. and then also, I think, attachment itself. So can we kind of mm -hmm. extrapolate that and just say sure. kind of lust or attachment itself with regard to these yeah. stanzas? I think you're a little bit ahead. I don't think you should explain that yet, but I could ask that question, right? Uh, I mean, this in the English, they inserted it. Uh, in the Tibetan, it doesn't say that. Um, and then again, the Karishukure, they said that the Kyunju Rogue, they in the Quran, she was down so I mean, they said that the Kyunju, that not a dear Rogue, and the engine, and there is again. Ponya Ponya Moy Moon Slovakian. La Ponya Ponya Moy Moon. Can't say too much, so touching. Depart num sum, top mean long, can't get to the Manzan Balaja Rogan. The engine all yard on the Ponya Ponya Mosu to Galadet under the Conjuxa, the Gimage wall of the wagon. That you did the Pime Rayacha to the Ponya now, the Jazz wagon. The Pimage wall, Mare Pakeva Polajan Rogan. Jay your vessel, the Korachi. 
Konya ngah sedih ni kan ngah soru lagi. Di ni kan juga soru lagi. Di soru je. Kalau ini nanti kap dia ni dekian dah. Cuma nanti sedih di konya ngah sedih pemain juga ngah betul betul dia ini marwah. Di kiri mana jasmu tu kan? Tapi dalam tu ni dia orang dong rupanya dia dia jual orang. Tapi dia hikau orang. Biar ganga itu ganga dong itu kan dia yang marwah. Tapi kalau dong itu ni Ibu nak kau di luar. Kamu dah nampak dia nak yang kau lihat ni mimi mangsa sedih kau pemain lagi jangan sedih doa kau. Tadi lihat ni mimi di dalam sendu kau pemain lagi jangan sedih doa kau. Mangsa sedih tadi sengsa di kini pas sengsa di ceh ina tadi kau cula jah cok doa kau. Di 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 ni nak kita nampak tu tujuh nak pemain orang mangsa lihat ni mimi sedih di. Jadi tu tu ni mah jah tu cuk cah tu rambut tu cah ni perjalanan cuk tu cuk cah tu. Cara nak lihat itu tu macam ni. Jadi semua macam ni. Panjang jauh cukup lagi. Jadi macam ni. Saya kagak cik pada susu, saya kagak cik pada apa? Jadi kor, ni macam cakap tu tu sih saya tidak cakap dia macam. Belum so. So actually in the Tibetan, you know, it really seems to say both, right? Not both genders are there. Ponya ponya mo. It's not just for the sake of mimic there. Anyway, but I asked. I said in the English that's inserted, right? It is there a Context, right, in which this is supposed to be, and Gisela said, uh, you know, I mean, in general, like when we deal with uh, later uh, what we call the impurities of the body, all all of that, how our body is unclean, right, many ways, uh, you know, the you know the example seems to be given of a women's body, uh, but that in the context that when usually in the ancient time, right, especially the teaching was given, the primary audience was monks, right, the male. Uh, male ordained person. Monks means the male. Not the nuns are not monks. Okay, <laughs> nuns are nuns, not monks. So monks, of course, it makes sense that they should think about right the women's body and impurity, so that they don't get attached to that and right they get disrobed. I mean, Gisel didn't say that. Okay, uh, but the same thing can be talked about the men's body too. Impurities in many ways. Right. So it goes to both. So in this case also, when we talk about setting a goal between persons, right? Of course, now we attention in ancient time. I know who does that these days, probably, right? Click, click, click. It's all social media. There's no goal between, right? But we are talking about <laughs> once upon a time, <laughs> you send goal betweens, right? Maybe we still do, right? I don't know. Ask for the hand. So it can work for both men and women. Okay. So life partner seems to be good, I think. I would say. So going back to the time of death, mm -hmm. this person asks, um, can Geshe-la please elaborate on the effectiveness of deathbed confessions? Mm -hmm. Do these purify negative thinking? Sure. Thank you, yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh -huh. She <laughs> So regarding a confession on the death's bed, right? Uh, confession of all the negativities we already did, and now we're confessing. Uh, I mean, does it really purify the karma or not, right? It's, it's effective in that sense. Uh, now, Geshe-la thinks, in generally speaking, yes, effective, purification works. But now, what does purification mean? It could have multiple levels of understanding. Yeah? It could mean that your karma is completely purified. I mean, that, right, that's the greatest news. Or it could mean that your karma is purified in the sense that uh, the, uh, the intensity of right, karmic outcome has been minimized, right? That, uh, you know, that's also purification. The purification also means that, you know, uh, that uh, in the beginning, if a particular karma requires you to suffer a lot, but now you suffer less, it might ripen in that form. So we might consider that as effectiveness as well. So it depends. The purification itself, the tapa, effectiveness could have multiple meanings. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <coughs> 
So the reference to sexual misconduct, mm -hmm. lust, impurities, it's yep. one category. And on the uh, hierarchy of wrongdoings and negativities, is that the topmost? Because, you know, there's unkindness and all those other lack of generosity and envy and jealousy. And what does, is this one of the worst conducts a human can engage in? You mean the sexual misconduct? Yeah. No. Morangi, can you share this figure again? That's another one that the Karasa or Yamdu Chen, the Dibat Awa Chigu in the Tachi Ruagi. So they got Dibala in it, that Dibala and the Rimbara Chev and Dibak and the Chiba in some of the Ruagi, Dibat Zapchilu, Ruagi, Zapchin, that would the Dibat Rimbara, Kashi also, Kashi Dingro, which is a good day Ruagi. Dinner yesterday, that under the Epena, the Chagi, Nimi Chilia, and a Carson was in the Lorem Church or Rogue. Lorem. Lorem D and Diba Zab Chate, which you go to West again, Diba, the young Diba Rogue. Zab Chujurich, Diba Pangrim Tiba and Roa, call you get there, said the watcher, what Zab Chim would need a tear there, and there is a Zahin and Dora, Zab Shah, now to order. Well, I mean, if you look in the list of the ten uh, negativities of body, speech, and mind, right, uh, uh, the sexual misconduct is counted, right, as one of them. So that in that sense, it is a serious negativity. Right, if it, in terms of ranking, right? Because it's highlighted in the 10 negativities, right? Yeah? Yeah. Less. 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 Any other questions? Yeah. <coughs> Well, some clarifications here uh, about the two questions, David's and, and the question about the death from uh, the internet, deathbed, deathbed confessions. Mm -hmm. I think he was referring in this question to uh, confession that not given by a, not by a Buddhist practitioner. It's not a conf like a Buddhist confession, but somebody you know, like somebody killed somebody, and uh, they are not Buddhist, and. It just before they die, they, they say, yes, I, I did it. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Oh, you mean about. just you just admit it? Yes. Uh -huh. he, that's, that's, I think that's what he was referring to, just okay. like, like in her question. Okay. That's Would that count not, as a beautification? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a Buddhist, just admitting, I, I did so, it. Right. Okay. That's right. In the case of Buddhist -like confession, right, we say it's not just enough to admit that, oh, oops, I killed, right? That admission it doesn't constitute confession. It has to integrate the four uh, those points, right? We talk about the regret and we know. So then the confession works, the purification that we talked about before. That's what Kishore assumed. Yeah. So, so the question was, will just the confession, mm -hmm. uh, this kind of confession, non-Buddhist confession, will that purify karma? Uh -huh. so the simple thing I killed. Yes. Okay. That, or feeling that, bad that, about that's it. The, that was what the question was. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, let me understand the question. Okay, so non Buddhist person, right, right. at the right. deathbed said, Oops, I killed him, right? Did that admit sense confession works right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. it, yeah it, does it have any effect? Right. Does it appear thinking? Yeah. <laughs> So, Gisela says, in that case, let the person 
right? Simply admits that I killed someone, it's not a confession, but some feels bad about it, a little bit, regret, right? Now that might work a little bit in terms of purifying a karma, right? Yeah. The original questioner added some context. Sure, sure. And he offered that for Catholics, mm -hmm. deathbed confessions are a part of their ritual. Okay. So perhaps. So what that's does that involve? Catholic question. ritual? Can he explain like he is a priest? And I said, you know what, Reverend, I shot him in the back. Or it, I don't know what's a Catholic confession. Sure. Maybe then a Kishala can understand, right? Otherwise, sure. Catholic confession was even I don't know what is Catholic confession. Okay, we'll ask for an example. Yeah. Okay. So does it involve like a priest, like behind the window, say like you know what? I really killed Tenzin, and I feel bad about it. So help me God, right? So purify my Tenzin karma. Kill. Is that what it is? He I'm assuming that's what it is, right? G Connie says yes. The original questioner says. Because I saw that in so the movie, right? Somebody <laughs> is there's one close here, and then uh, someone said like, Reverend, don't look at my face. I killed Tenzin, <laughs> right? So, help me purify. Is that what it is? Right? The original yeah. Connie okay. says yes. The original questioner says I don't know. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> what I saw in the movie. Maybe that's what it is, right? Okay. So let me do that. See if Kishla can explain. Now, you can you should this another for us all again. Shape source to one again. You should talk about the dinner dish again. That also the question seven, you know, and then come back to six six hours in Algeria. Lama of the person with a day or what don't take me to one. That means what that game pass also get into those six hours once or again. That could conjure you pushing in the quota of cherokees can love you to one. The dinner seven and the quota of your man again. The Paranzo di Yamnero again. The Paranzo Lama Dava di Kibun Pajama de Roa. Tang di Bachigan Chigan Roa, Tang eighty to the Sess House Room, Tak, Kunjo di Pesas, Tak, Kunjo di Batava Chiroches and Dinish and Dia Tagu and Man. Taka Des, Giba is something metal. But that current Giba of Sandy Kujal did Taya get loaded by Shabu Shu in that Tagu de Tarota. So Geshe-la, is he's not sure, but he thinks that, right, in the process looking at that, right, because uh, this person believes in God, right, and this person feels bad, he killed Tenzin, you know, so he's asking for the priest's help to communicate to the God that, whoops, I killed Tenzin, right, in that case, because of the regret and what he's trying to do with the connect, maybe it helps to beautify, right, the karma. Yeah. Yeah. About uh, David's question, uh, about the crazy thoughts, Yes. Uh, first of all, is there such a Category is a crazy thought. Isn't that, uh, doesn't that refer to any thought, any, any samsaric thoughts? Oh, any oh, samsaric, the, uh, the, the crazy thoughts that we have to keep isolate, isolate the mind from. Oh, you meant eight worldly concerns? No. No, no. He, his question was initially was about, based on, on what, the way you translate as a, the crazy, isolate the mind from crazy thoughts. Yes, yes. No, so, that's so my thoughts, what I mean, like a disturbing thought. I said, that's hard to translate. Yeah, it yeah. depends what is numb dog. The, the so afflictive thoughts, conceptual thoughts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, hmm. so m my question is, so there is no such category. I mean, and, uh, oh, I it guess, doesn't yes. that include the category of crazy thoughts, the way you translate it as crazy, numb dog, whatever oh, that I means? Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Does, it, does that mean, uh, thoughts, samsaric thoughts, any samsaric okay. thought. For example, th thoughts that normally they're not considered crazy at all. They're right, not crazy, right. like thinking uh -huh. about their family. What are they doing back home? Uh, or about politics, about mm -hmm. the world, who's being killed in what war and all okay. that. Sure, I'll check. You know, normal things that we yeah. think about it. Doesn't that include, well, that the, isn't right. that all the crazy thoughts? Sure. Anything, yeah. sure. anything that's not related to your object of meditation. Sure. That's a good idea again. Same number of women by says your again. Number of said engine are due to the couple shoes to again. That what they would use in a yak on the course and ballet. Uh, the same number of ever said the that and the answer when she needed to get sent again. So, so he comes up, change the same in a car in a dash in a good time. Mado, delay shame again. Number of again. That remember the young in a middle of the car is chicken in a summer wagon. The number of jets to the wagon. Yes, you're right. Geshe-la says, right, I mean, in the Buddhist context, of course, take away the crazy one because I put it just to make it more understandable, but then it creates more problem there. Yes, whatever your focus is, right, apart from that focus, any other thoughts, right, concerns, it is we call it uh, numb dog, right, and that distracts your mind, right, so it could be concerned about, oh, my families, are they thinking about, that is, right, part of the crazy thought, don't say crazy thought, but yeah, 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 sure. 
Someone offered one more comment about the deathbed confessions. Uh -huh. So she says, uh, realistically, mm -hmm. a confession offers closure to victims mm -hmm. and relief for those wrongly accused. <laughs> mm -hmm. I believe that must at least reduce the burden <laughs> of karma <coughs> for the confessor. So she's she's sharing this point. Right, that's what she thinks, right? That's yeah. what she thinks, right. yes. But the high example it seems to be a little more kinder one because I'm already dead, so I don't know, I'm the victim, so how does that work? But but hers is a different one, right? At least <laughs> the victim is alive and you confess, it helps I understand that. Okay, yeah. Other that like this working on the Quran's <laughs> 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 Yeah, can understand how the uh, the victimizer might feel a little less burden because you kind of got something out of the chest, right? You said, I'm sorry, you know, I did it, right? And then if the victim is still alive, right, might feel like, okay, some sort of justice has been done, right? But my example of standing died. So, but you know, yeah. So I report his observations, not. <laughs> Thank you very much. We started there today. I have prayer request for. Uh, see, I'm getting old. Need four glasses. Again, Kedi. Tumme kamjo naora nas me chhi mitu da konto dirwa ke samjhen rube tumme me do ke Cook. So the Cook family, oh, sorry, first I was saying to me. That the Cook Nang Miki, the France of Pugodin, Yiji, Chu, the Tabata, and Dindegi, and to make him another one of the again. So the prayer request from the Cook family, uh, I think, for their uh, kids to be really connected with Dharma, right? And uh, for that kind of prayers, so that's what Geshla clarified right now, because I only have the name. It says, prayers for Min, Bin, and Kindo. Looks like there's three, actually. Uh, the Cook family. OK, so let's pray for the kids to be connected with the Dhamma. Yeah, uh, oh. 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 Okay, so now more clarification I got. So uh, it is, uh, you know, our own Kimberley's, I think, two sons, right? May they be able to meet with the Holy Dharma, meet with qualified gurus, and so they stay on the path, right? That's the prayer request. Uh, so the kids' names are Min and Bin, not the Kindo. I know the Kindo is here, so whoever that is, uh, and prayer for that person too. So it's the Cook family's request for the two sons to meet Dharma with the holy teacher and Kindo too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh then that sons on the bang and
Omone mone ma mone ye so ha ge wa di nyo da da sha ye ye won ru jo ne ro wa chi jang de ye sa la ge ba ra sho lo de ja ze yu dong be ba de ge sa pu ye chi do men ba xin den ba zin la wan zo ji Tanyin Yongzo yure tobe nyake shi nore teje nubu pede Tobe ni kangri ta bo shab zin shu Dona kongme zeba namda kwen Tenda nrobe pende Kendo jimi chibe chinle ji Kesan duje tindu shab Chizu yamame tukje mo lamda Kesan duje tindu namda Chojong dodo jidu Dengue人多说,让江心给我们不吃吧,没做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到那么一样,做到